Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Elaine here from Jerry Brown Travels. Jack here from Jerry Brown Travels. <laughs> Dan here from Jerry Brown Travels. <laughs> <laughs> and Lori <Lord> here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to do a series here. It's going to be a four part series where we're going to interview each one individually and find out how they have been able to live on $300 a month each and they're doing co-housing. So follow us in this series and you'll learn a little bit about Elaine, Jack and Dan and their personal stories. I know you'll find it interesting. Uh, travels, and I want to introduce you to Dan Rock. And Dan Rock, he rocks. I met Dan about three weeks ago and uh, we're having a conversation and he came around about living down here in Mexico. And he was indicating to me that he's living here on $300 a month. And I says, I've got to interview this guy. And so, Dan, give us a little bit of your history, where you're from, and give us a little idea of how you're able to do that. And maybe some background information, you know, leading up, you know, to getting to where you could retire at, how old? 50. 50 years old. Not semi-retired. Semi-retired, okay, good. <laughs> okay, so give us a little background. Um, okay, well, basically the three keys to uh, retiring at 50 for me was community living, number one, living with people, because I found that rent is the big expense for everybody. Yeah. So if you can live with multiple people, and uh, then your expenses are down quite a bit. And uh, also minimalism, being a minimalist as much as possible, you know. And I found being a minimalist and experiencing minimalism, I found the less that I have, the less that I need, the happier I am. I found that. Yeah. So, and also the third thing for me is just trust in the universe. It's guided me here. Uh huh. It was like it was obvious. So, yeah, those are three things that brought me here, and being here. Those continue to be my three biggest keys living here. Community living. I, we bought this house. With, I bought this house with two friends. And uh, so now the expenses are just a third. When, when we have house expenses, it's just a third. And we bought it outright, so there's no mortgage. There's no rent. That's good. So that's, that's huge. And uh, yeah, still the minimalistic lifestyle. Uh, I do have a small job here. It's not needed, but it's helpful. Uh, so I walk dogs and, and maybe make like a couple hundred dollars a month walking dogs. So I can spend maybe five or six hundred a month. But if the dog walking stopped, then I could definitely live on 300 a month. Yeah, just not going to restaurants, just cooking at home and entertainment, free movies off the internet. And yeah, the best things in life are free, I've found for sure. Okay, so I met, you don't have a car. Don't have a car. Okay, so you're walking, you get a lot of exercise. Biking, walking, busing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, now, let me ask you this. Are you a trust fund baby? I mean, did, did you inherit like, you know, the millions of dollars that you can live like this? How no, I didn't inherit. Um, in my, actually, in my 20s and 30s, I lived like I was going to live off their, the trust fund. When I turned 40, I said, no, no, I'm going to do this on my own. And uh, so I actually had, I lived from paycheck to paycheck in my 20s and 30s. And then I just decided at 40 to stop all that and start saving money, community living. My, my rent was only like four or $500 a month. I was making $2,000 at my job. And I thought that was a lot of money. I would ask my friends and they were like, that's not very much money at all. <laughs> uh, that's a lot for me. So yeah. Community living and minimalism, that's that's the two things. And I know with uh, housing costs, you know, uh, an old formula used to be 25% of what you made, you paid on housing, but today, now it's like most people spend 40% of their uh, income on housing. Right. So if you cut that out, that really makes it reasonable. To it's apply. huge. Now, community living here, so, uh, 
tell us a little bit about you know your roommates and, and, and how does that work? Well, you have to expect that things aren't going to go all great all the time, just like in a marriage, right? <laughs> It's not going to be all honeymoon. The honeymoon's going to be over eventually, and there's going to be issues with your roommates that irritate you. And but I find it very simple. Community living, you have the option of being with the people or going to your room <laughs> if they get on your nerves. So I've spent days in my room, <laughs> and that's fine. Go for a walk. Go ride for your a, bike. That's right. <laughs> there's there's no downside to community living. I don't think. Um, well, I guess you do have to trust the people that you're with. They they should be trustworthy and friends. And okay, but then that, how long have you known them? Well, I have known one of my roommates for like 30, 35 years. He's my brother and my ex brother in law, so a really good friend. And then he, he and then his his new girlfriend, who we just met. I just met three years ago. So, but it's working. Yeah. So, but I know that I do mention this to a lot of people and they do have issues with living with people so yeah so uh so there was a major change then in your thinking when you got to be 40 right. were you looking at the idea of retiring that changed that thinking were, were you were there things that you were uh, getting in tune to maybe on youtube you know there's a whole movement now called the fire movement are you familiar with that? No. No, okay. Well, it's basically, FIRE is uh, financial independence, retire early. So there's a lot of people that are in your bracket that work really hard and, and, and sacrifice so then they can retire early. And a lot of them are able to do that but they're not really, they're, like you said earlier, semi-retired. This way they can choose an occupation that they would rather do. Maybe they always wanted to do their art or maybe they just wanted to be a writer. Whatever it is, they've gotten to that financial independence. Now you've done that here. Give us a little background. How did you manage to get that initial amount of money to live on $300 a month? Well. Um, yeah, like I said, in my 20s and 30s, there was no sacrifices. I lived paycheck to paycheck and I had a lot of fun. Um, I had a little bit of an addictive behavior with substances and whatever. So at 40, I decided, okay, I've had my fun in my 20s and 30s. Not that the fun's going to stop, but it's just <laughs> going to be a little different now. Yeah. I'm going to use that addictive behavior that I have and I'm going to get addicted to saving money. Okay. So how am I going to do that? Well, number one thing, I got to live with a few people. So I have two roommates back home from, my, from 35 till I came here. So 15 years, my rent was only $500 a month. Okay. I was making 2000 only working six hours a day from Monday to Friday uh -huh. and minimalism. So I was actually saving $1,000 a month for 10 years. Okay. Which, and with my job, there was money put aside for pension as well. So a thousand bucks a month for 10 years is 120,000. This is Canadian. Right. Right? And then my pension was about 50,000 as well. So I had enough money. We bought this house for like 200,000. I couldn't have bought it on my own. No. I only had no. like 150, 160,000. But with two other people, now I'm down to only needing 70,000. Mm -hmm. And that's plenty of money, okay. right? Okay, yeah, and then you're also uh, supplementing with the dog uh, walking service here. That's, that, that's so I'm not depleting what I have. Right. But when I came here, knowing the amount of money that I had, I said, I can retire until I reach the age of 60, okay. which is when the Canadian government gives us checks oh. every month. Okay. <laughs> so that was my plan. Oh, okay. But with the dog walking, <laughs> I'm not depleting any of my savings. Wow. It's, I'm basically breaking even with my dog walking. So, yeah. And, and with this house, we also have an extra room. We, get, we get, have a renter every okay. once in a while. So okay. I yeah. can make money off renting as yeah. well. Okay, great. Now, what about on a day-to-day -day basis? You, you apparently eat at home. Now, 
are you eating like beans and rice and rice and beans? I mean, are you you know eating uh, milk and, and and bread? You know, are you are you getting a round diet? Or yes. What are you getting? Definitely. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you each meal. I'm pretty much a routine guy. So I have granola and fruit and yogurt in the morning. Simple granola, fruit, yogurt. Uh, lunch, tortillas, pasta. It's really cheap when you buy it from the stores here. Yeah. And then suppers are chicken, rice, and vegetables. Okay. So are you uh, a semi-vegetarian? Uh, I don't eat that much meat, but I wouldn't call myself a semi-vegetarian or a vegetarian. Okay. Because no. meat can be expensive. Depends. Okay. I can actually, I could actually um, get five little chicken breasts for 50 pesos, 40 pesos. Okay, chicken, yeah, okay. Right? And I imagine you're, yeah, like if you do go out, you're eating at the taco stands and, and, and I, that. I can, I can indulge, depending on how much money I'm yeah. making from dog walking <laughs> or not. So let me ask you this, indulge, what would it cost you to indulge in, let's say, a meal out? I just indulged before coming here and it was 100 pesos okay. which is seven dollars canadian five dollars american and that was indulging for me yeah uh -huh. a great burger with cheese and bacon and, yeah so that's my indulgence okay so yeah you, you, and, and normally i can eat for 20 pesos 20 or 30 pesos per meal yeah okay so like okay a so, or two. so like a dollar the 20 pesos in us is is one dollar so a dollar to a dollar fifty if you're eating out or no if I cook. Cook home. Okay. But if I eat out it'll cost maybe five dollars. Okay, okay. So so you're cooking five times as much on four times. Yeah. So you're cooking at home, you're eating more at home. Uh, that's key. Yeah. As well as uh, community living is cooking at home and eating at home and not going to restaurants. Okay. Even though it seems like such a good deal at the restaurant. Yeah. When you, it's not really No, not when you're trying to live on three hundred dollars a month. Right. You know. Now the other thing, how about let's say like, um, do you smoke and drink? I mean, do you have? I mean, imagine you have. You know, people who drink spend a lot on alcohol. I don't drink alcohol at all. Okay. So that's not one of my things. Um, I do smoke a little, but it's really cheap. Okay. So it's, it's negligible. Right? Okay. Okay. Well, this is good. So, what advice would you give to somebody that would love to be able to live in another country? And I imagine that's a big uh, factor too. Picking a country that's low cost of living, and then and then being able to live on three hundred dollars a month. Right. What, what advice would you give to somebody that would love to do this? Well, I, I think I've already mentioned um, that. Uh, yeah, just live with people. Keep your. I don't know. What's Did you hear the beautiful music? <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so, so, I interrupted you. Um, yeah, well, we're distracted from that. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give? I would you? advise what basically what I've already said is uh, community living, living with people, keeping your rent down, uh, minimalism, and uh, you can do it. Finding a couple of people. I, I think you need two, so three of you all together. Two people. Find two people you can trust to uh, either rent a house, buy a house, whatever. Right, yeah. right, okay. So you don't need to be as extreme as buying a house. Right. You could rent, you know, and finding some people that you could rent. But again, I imagine the key is, is even in that factor, is keep it down, let's say, again, I've used my formula, 25% of the group's uh, combined income uh, that would make it. So as an example, if the group combined income is $1,000, Maybe you look for rent about two hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Not, you know, don't try to get, a, you know, a, a house that's, you know, five hundred dollars, five hundred peso, five hundred U.S. dollars a month or anything like that. Try to keep it within reason. Mm -hmm. But if there's three of you in the house, yeah, you could you could afford a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, it depends yeah. on how much money you have. Right. Each person. Right. Now, what, uh, what would you say? Somebody would need, you're doing it, but as a nest egg, let's say before they could. You know, I would say at least 100,000 American, because I had 150,000 Canadian. Okay, so, okay. It's rough to say. Okay, so, uh, so you feel that somebody could have saved $100,000 and come down 
let's say in Mexico, and uh, find if they don't have the people, find two other people and do co-housing together and look at splitting everything up in that way that you could do it on $100,000. Now that's keeping in mind that you're going to get help from the government after a certain amount of time, right? So I had that at 50. I was 50 years old when I made that commitment and had 150,000 knowing that in 10 years, I will be getting a check from the government. So that was only gonna cover me for 10 years, that 150,000. That was if I didn't have the dog walking. Okay, that's an important factor. Right, so you so re to retire at 30 and do that, that's not gonna work for you. Okay, so you're very realistic. So you have 100,000, 150,000, you, 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 you bought into this house here at 50,000. Right. So now it gives you 100 left over. And you were talking, that will last me 10 years. Right. And then it, in 10 years, I, then my pension will come Keep in it. and that will carry me forward the rest of, the the rest of my life. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, okay, that's a very uh, feasible plan because in our particular case, uh, you, you know, from the States, if a person is working and they did the same thing at 65, then they could get their social security right. and, and move in in that direction. Depending how much they put into it throughout their career. Right, what their social security would get. Upcoming video, part two. And then we will talk to the millionaire in part three who lives on $300 a month now. Don't miss this upcoming video where I'm going to interview them. We're going to come into their house and see how they live. They're living on $300 a month each. I'm really impressed with Dan. You know, coming down here, living on $300 a month and uh, living a great life and uh, living in a beautiful home. It's not a shack, that's for sure. But uh, thanks, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'd shake your hand, but we're social distancing <laughs> here. So <laughs> we'll do a virtual shot. Uh, shake yeah. Hand. yeah. <laughs> okay, good.